Let's talk pets. Look, more and more renters have had pets than ever before. So it's super important to accommodate their furry friends or accept that it might be harder to fill your vacancies, which of course you don't want. In fact, according to the America Pet Product Association's 2022 National Pet Owner Survey, 70% of US households 90 million families own a pet. More significant is the fact that the number has been steadily increasing for decades, with it being just 56% in 1988 and then 67% recently in 2019. But that doesn't have to mean that every pet should be allowed in your rental property. And this is why conducting a pet screening is becoming increasingly important. So to begin, let's go over what is a pet screening and why is it important. A pet screening is essentially a background check for a prospective tenant's pet. This background check is done before a tenant moves in and is typically part of the tenant screening process. Some of the things that are checked in a pet screening include things like pet's behavior, a pet's age, their medical history, breed, gender, age, weight, and anything else that you find important. Depending on the property managers, there can be multiple parts of a pet screening process. Also, the property management may choose to conduct the screening process through a third-party service or potentially do it themselves. Nevertheless, pet screenings are a very important part of a landlord's job to help make sure the property stays in order. So here's some of the notable benefits of conducting pet screenings for your prospective tenants. The first and possible most important reason is to protect their property. Since having cats or dogs inside a rental property increases the risk of property being damaged, it's important to make sure that the risk is as low as possible. This is the main reason that property managers used to not allow pets in their rental property. Also, since dogs and cats especially shed a lot of hair, the property can become difficult to clean and can inherit a strong smell after some time. Another reason for conducting pet screenings is to make sure that the neighbors or other residents will not be disturbed by the presence of a pet. This is incredibly important because every resident, not just the pet owner, is subject to quiet and peaceful living. If a pet begins to disturb the living condition of one of the other residents, the resident may complain and even take legal action. So to mitigate the chances of this happening, property managers conduct pet screenings. And the third reason is because it generally reduces the risk of many things happening within the rental property. For example, there are some animals that people have as pets that are considered illegal in some states. Housing these animals could lead to legal trouble, which no property manager wants to deal with. So now that you know the importance of conducting these pet screenings, let's get into the most important part, how to conduct them. The first thing that should be done before even beginning the pet screening process is to make sure the tenant knows any and all rules and regulations regarding pets in the rental property. Now getting this out of the way early can help save time during the process itself because it gives the tenant a clear picture of what is expected of them as well as things like the pet rent, the pet deposit, and the pet screening process. This is especially important because every property manager may have their own pet policy that differs from other properties. After discussing all those rules and regulations with prospective tenants, it's time to have them fill out a pet screening screening application. A pet screening application serves as a great opportunity to ask questions to make sure the tenant's pet will be a good match for the rental property. Some of the questions that you might ask on a pet screening application include, what type of pet is it? How long have you had the pet? Does the pet have any behavioral traits that can cause problems? How much time a day will the pet be spending alone? Is your pet house trained? Are you willing to pay the pet security deposit and pet rent? Will there be any pet sitters that stay at the property? And anything else that the property manager may find important. Some applications will also require a pet resident which essentially is just information about the pet. This application will typically be done online and generate a pet profile for the pet, especially if the property manager prefers an online pet screening. An online pet screening is usually the easiest method as it doesn't require much effort from the property manager and compiles the pet's complicated life into one simple profile. If the pet screening application had some red flags, it may be appropriate to conduct a pet interview. This in-person interaction is sometimes part of a pet screening service, but can be done by the property manager themselves. During the interview, the first thing that should be done is to make sure the pet matches the information given on the application. This means make sure it matches the photo, the breed, size, etc. Then it's important that you begin to address the concerns you had from the application. You should note any aggressive behavioral traits or excessive barking from the pet. Also, it may be important if the pet can follow basic commands like sit and stay. Now let's talk about service and emotional support animals. So it depends on specific situation, but landlords may be forced to have to weigh their no pet policy. This is because under the Fair Housing Act, Tenants can request reasonable accommodation, which includes being allowed to house their service animals. An emotional support animal is a service animal that provides service to the owner in the form of emotional care and companionship. This means that these service animals are not trained in any way to deal with physical or mental impairment like a service dog is. Emotional support animals are only protected by the Fair Housing Act. Service animals, however, are protected by both the Fair Housing Act 
and the Americans with Disability Act. This is important because it does mean that service animals will be subject to fewer restrictions under federal law when compared to emotional support animals. In conclusion, just like with any other landlord-tenant interaction, it's important for both parties to have patience with each other. This could be a long and complicated process, but it requires commitment from both groups of people in order to make it work. And finally, be respectful of your tenants. These animals probably mean a lot more to them than you might think. If this video helped you out, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more property management tips. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!